Hello everyone and welcome. I'm here to just quickly tell you about the topic of our workshop and I'm jumping in with this recording because at the beginning we chatted too much and we forgot to press record. So welcome to The Greenest Kids in Town by Harry Waters from Renewable English. Uh, we are proud to have him in Methodology Land and we can't wait to keep on collaborating with Harry. Let's read a little bit about the presenter first. Harry Waters has been buried deep in TEFL world for over 40 years. He is a trainer for the Elton's award-winning Pearson and BBC Live Classes project. His passion for teaching and obsession with the planet led him to create Renewable English and do teacher training and design courses. Outside of work, he is devoted dad and husband to the two most wonderful ladies alive, in his opinion, of course. Harry's workshop has a, a lot of practical ideas to help you turn your classroom into a greener place to be. He will be sharing plenty of ideas to get your students hooked on the planet in an engaging way. So that would be all about Harry. Uh, now let's go to the actual workshop recording and I hope you enjoy it. And it's also, you, you don't want to terrify them. They do need to know the, the realities of the situation. You know, my daughter's eight and she's very eco aware. Um, but it's, we need to take it as a process. It's not, you know, it doesn't need to go from today they know nothing, tomorrow they're Greta. You know, it, it would be nice if everyone would do that. And suddenly then maybe we would be able to take drastic action. But when we're looking at, at kids and, and young learners, we need to think about the process. It is a marathon, it isn't a sprint. And with the, the climate emergency being su such a broad spectrum, there are so many things they can learn and so many things we need to help them learn. So we need to really take it step by step and we need to try and be positive, but also realistic. Um, there are lots of different things we can do to do that. And we will talk about those today. But also a really important thing that, that I've learned and I've seen, not only with kids, but with everybody, is what you do needs to be real. It needs to be relevant. So keeping it personal and keeping it local is a lot more important than making it dramatic. Now, I think polar bears are brilliant. Polar bears, they're the bee's knees. I love them, but I've never seen a polar bear. I've never been to the North Pole. So coming in and saying all the polar bears are dying and the ice caps are melting, for one minute I'll be like, oh, that's sad. Where's my bag? You know, you forget about it if it's not relevant. So we need to make things relevant. And, and above all, we need to develop a love for nature. Now, the climate crisis always used to be about humans versus nature. You know, what we are doing to the planet well, we are we are hurting the planet and so on and so forth. Yes, we are, but there's also a human aspect to it as well, which is now becoming much more um, relevant. The human side of the climate crisis is becoming more real. But for me, when it comes to kids, the first and easiest step of all is to foster a love for nature because who doesn't love nature? Nature's awesome. It gives you flowers, it gives you animals, rivers like all of these things they come from nature um, Harry, i'm so sorry to interrupt you but i think no your problem. presentation is frozen and you went on talking so oh, don't uh, worry uh, i haven't moved the page oh, yet okay okay it's, sure, it's all sure. good i thought I'm moving i was just on checking now. if it was frozen okay no no sorry, it's all good. sorry so here we go <clears throat> and what we're going to talk about are these things in nature uh the first two are all about nature so we're going to talk about plants and nature and then we're going to talk about upcycling then being plastic clever which is an idea that i've stolen from these guys <laughs> kids against plastic my one of my favorite charities um uh, and then we'll look at some green routines and some we'll do some idea sharing at the end so anything that you hear that you think that was a stupid thing that he said fine tell me why you think it's stupid and we can talk about it but as I say, there are lots of ideas. So I imagine um, Milica will make the, the presentation available to you afterwards if you want to go back and have a look. So 
Let's start with plants. The first step I say to anybody who's teaching any level of any ability or any age is get a class plant. Get a plant in your classroom. The first thing for anybody to do is just go out and get a simple plant. It, it doesn't cost very much, but also asking your students to do that as well would be brilliant. So you can have as many plants in the classroom as you can. There are so many benefits to this. So, so many. Um, so first of all, they bring color and life to your classroom. You know, they, you're literally bringing life into the classroom. Students can see this life. They can watch it grow. They can see the color of it. It's, you have this thing there that is nature. This is everything that's good about the planet that you can see there. And there are so many very easy to grow plants. There are so many out there. I'm not sure where the best place to go is in Serbia, but here you can go to all sorts of outlets. Places like Ikea have loads of them. I'm not a huge fan of Ikea plants, but they're fine. Um, if you can find a nice, they're called viveros here. I think they're called garden centers in England. And just buy a few house plants, one or two. And it is, you know, literally a matter of spending three or four euros on, on a plant getting it there in the classroom. Now I tell you, students straight away will notice that class plant. That will be the first thing they see when they go into the classroom and they will be fascinated. I'm talking, you know, kids from, from six to 66. You know, the first thing they see when they walk in is a plant and they're instantly curious about it. So the first step to get any kid interested in teaching, grab a plant. Now the next part of that is endless projects seriously you can do so many projects with a class plant <laughs> so many one of them you can measure how long it is um another one you can get two plants you can water one of them and not water the other one and see how quickly it is before it needs water or you can put one in the window by the sunlight and one away from the sunlight and see the difference in growth. Now, these aren't things that have to take much time in your class, but it also gives you another job. Now, I know with a lot of young learners classes, we have jobs charts, you know, we have the, the board eraser, we have the person who tells the class to speak in English, we have, you know, the, every single job that we can find. So there's something there. You can have the plant waterer, or you can even have the leaf counter. You know, there are so many different things you can do with this plant. You can give this plant a whole new life. You know, we have endlessly in our classes, we have like muñecos, which are called puppets. There you go. Sorry, a bit of L2 interference there. Um, we have puppets in the classroom. Like, oh, hello, this is Pete the puppet. You don't need that anymore. You've got Pete the plant, you know, and Pete the plant, can be there, he can talk to your students or she can talk to your students or they can talk to your students and they can get all these ideas across to them. Now, this is just simply from having the plant there. Other great projects you can do. Now, one I did a few years back with my class was with this exact plant, actually, it's very old now. Um, you're, an old, you're an old one, aren't you, Pete? And you need a water, I've been neglecting you. I know, I'm sorry. Um, another thing you can do is propagate. Now, these are great for propagating. You just need to simply snip it off and put it in a jar of water, then leave that on the windowsill and you'll be able to see the sprouts coming out of it. And you can then give them to your students. Your students can take them home. They have their own plant from the class. Now, throughout the year, you'll be able to grow enough of the plant to give each of your students a plant. Now, that, well, that depends. If you have 30 students in your class, it might be tricky, um, but if you have, 10 or 10 or 11 it's a lot easier um so for me these there are so many of these projects that you can do we'll talk more about outside of the plant but there are so many other things you can grow you can grow lentils you can grow cress you can get a seed you can germinate a seed now these simple things of getting these plants into your classroom are the, the easiest steps you can take but they will make a massive 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 difference to your class but also to the opinion of your students on how they treat nature. You can teach them how to take care of plants. If you're not great at taking care of plants, you will also learn 
how to take care of plants because the students will be there to teach you as well. You know, you can even have the plant cleaner. They have to go there, they have to dust the plants. Now, the last point I have to make about plants, um, and I could talk about class plants all day long, you know, the amount of CO2 they absorb. So towards the end of the day, your students will be more alert. That's just science, you know? They take that, so you've got three or four plants in there, the CO2 levels will drop in the classroom, students will be more aware. But that's not the point I wanted to make. They are so good for timeouts. Now, I don't know what your attitude is to timeouts in class, but what I found when I got a plant, the thing that it was so good for in my young learners class, students have a tendency to talk a lot. Now, it's often they just, they're just so desperate to speak. You know, they want to say what they want to say. Sometimes they can't communicate in English. So we go to L1 and we help them. Or, but sometimes they're just, I don't know, they're talking about Pokemon and they can't stop. They just can't stop. Now, what I like to do with that is say, I say it's cool. You can talk about Pokemon in, in Spanish, Serbian, Turkish, whatever language you like. But talk to the plant, you know, go and talk to the plant. Because if we talk nicely to a plant, if we tell plants all of these lovely things, they'll get our CO2 and they will grow more. You know, the, the nicer you talk to the plant. So they'll take a couple of minutes and they'll go and talk to the plant. They'll get what they need to say out and then they'll come back. They will have talked to a plant, which is grand. Now, the older they get, they're less happy to do it. So, you, you know, you've got double win here. Either they don't talk, <laughs> in there, you know, and, and don't endlessly talk, or they go and talk to a plant, the plant grows, everyone has a bit of a laugh and it's a bit of fun. So for me, the first step you can do, and you can do this on Monday, you can just take a plant into your classroom, although Monday might be a holiday for you because tomorrow is workers day. Also in Spain, it's mother's day. Um, so it's mother's day and workers day, and it's the town fair. So. Um, I don't know why I need to tell you that. Now, the next part of this talk is about get your class into nature. Now, I know that Alice does it. Um, if you can't take your class into nature, you can take nature into your class. Now, there are so many different ways of doing this. We're going to have a look now at these different ideas. Now, there are lots of them, okay? And there are many, many more as well. So... Just a question. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Since we have very few participants, we want to ask you, do you want to discuss each step now or do you want to discuss at the end? We planned at least 20 minutes for discussion so you can talk openly. But since we have a little number of people, I thought uh, to ask you this. So would you like to discuss now as, as Harry goes through the steps or at the end? It's your choice. You can unmute or use the chat box. We just want to see what you want. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe completely free to speak whenever yeah, you like. Yeah, yeah, because that, that's the beauty of, of a small group. So, how do you feel? Oh, Ravenna is unmuted, but Ravenna, we can't hear you. What are you saying, Ravenna? Yes, Ravenna. Can you use the chat box? Oh, very, very silently. Um, Very, very silently. Oh. No, it's still the same. It's like very, very silent. It's like the microphone's on the other side of the room. Mm -hmm. No, no, don't be sorry. Can you write in the chat box for now? Uh, Celine, what do you think? Chatting now or at the end? Uh, I prefer at the end. Okay, great. We have another participant. I'm not sure what's the name, so uh, let us know. Okay, so here ETR you... 21, obviously. Sounds very, very, very good. <laughs> Okay. I'm so, like a droid from Star Wars. <laughs> Great. Okay. So at the end then. Thank you, everybody. Perfect. So now when we're talking about nature, um, taking inside, taking the inside out. Okay. So this is taking your classroom out into nature. Now there are so many different things you can do when you're out in nature. There are just hundreds of different things you can do. The number one thing about going out into nature with your students is they're not in the classroom. So they will remember that moment and they will love that moment. The minute your students are anywhere other than the classroom, the class instantly becomes more memorable. Now, what we do with our, our students, we have 
Um, we have a few classes of students that, that we have here. They're six to nine um, in the two different classes. And we go, we go to the park or we go, um, over, we've got like some countryside nearby. And the first thing we always do is just sit down in a circle. We even go to the garden sometimes. We sit down in a circle, we just close our eyes and we just listen. We just spend a few minutes of just listening. And in that time, you know, breathing and centering ourselves around our breath, we're just listening to what we can hear. And it's amazing the difference of what you can hear from the garden here to the countryside, which is, you know, a two minute walk away. Um, and they can't always address what it is in their in, in English. They often have to go to, to their, their mother tongue, students' mother tongue. But when they're sitting there and taking it in, they're listening, they're connecting with nature. And you can almost always hear birds. You can hear insects. Uh, you can hear the electricity lines that go above uh, the houses here. You can hear people's swimming pools in this area because it's very hot here. So like everybody has a swimming pool because it gets to 50 degrees in the summer. Um, but you also, they can hear insects. They can hear cars in the distance. And it's just a great way of them connecting in that moment with everything that's happening around them. Um, one student mentioned they could hear the wind, you know, and they could hear the trees. They could hear the, the, the leaves in the trees. And you're, you're, you're getting vocabulary from this. You're also building vocabulary. But most importantly is you're connecting them to nature. And you can then even say, so out of the things that you could hear, which ones do you think are more dangerous to nature or which ones are less dangerous you know so often they'll say birds are less dangerous insects are less dangerous uh, trees are less dangerous but cars you know six-year-olds know that cars are not great for nature they don't know why but they know that they're not a natural thing you know electricity they'll hear that buzzing and they'll say electricity that's not great for nature well obviously it depends you know that's not say electricity is all bad if there's if there's renewable energy it's not terrible um but you know six and seven year olds instantly know this and, and they just know it naturally the next one is what can you see so you've done what can you hear obviously with your mindful listening what can you see just asking them what they can see while they're there in a circle standing round. these simple things looking at what there is out there in nature um connecting it to whatever you're learning at the time um the one that I, I think I love the most uh, is the find the. Now this is, you know, find the smallest rock you can or uh, find the greenest leaf you can see or find the, the, the item of fruit that is growing on a tree. Like, so you get them to go and find something that's there in nature and they can go off and they can look absolutely everywhere for it. Now, again, you can do this in your classroom. You just have to bring it into your classroom. Um, where does it come from? Where does it go? Now, this one I use as a more um, as a more as a negative thing, to be honest. So if we're out in nature and we can find some trash, you know, I ask them, where does this come from? Where does it go? You can also do it, of course, with natural things. But like when you show a six year old a plastic bottle and you say, where does it come from? They say, the supermarket. Where does it go? The bin. Maybe they'll say recycling. Maybe. Um, but not always. You know, it's, so it's a great way of them connecting with these items of trash and, and giving them a life cycle, going back and, and finding where they belong, but also where they're going to go because every single thing that, that has ever been made is going to be around for longer than us. Um, paint a stick. Kids love sticks. Sticks are so cool. And you know, you, you can paint a stick, you can turn it into a magic wand. It can be your trash wand where you point at the trash and you learn about that trash. You can do anything with a stick. Absolutely. Look at that. There's, I can see a stick there. That's, it's amazing. Sticks are like the best things in the world. Um, just make sure they're not too sharp because <laughs> there could be accidents. Um, make insect hotels. Now, that's something we've got here in our garden. Now, I'm going to show you with my other camera. Oh, look at this. Some kind of genius. Um, 
if we look, oh, I'm just going to switch my camera across. One moment. You can stop sharing so we can see. It's going to take up. Absolutely, we'll <laughs> stop sharing. You're right. Let me stop sharing my screen. Let me change my camera. Good shout there. So you can see over there on the floor. Oh, down there. Oh, there's some, someone's trash is blown in there. This, we've just let all of the all of the weeds have gone absolutely crazy. We've let them grow. And this has become our insect hotel where any insect is free to live. We go out there, we check our insects. And a bit further along, you can see some pumpkins growing out of season. But, you know, they are anyway. And there's some there's some nice roses as well. Um, that's, that's my front garden. Um, welcome, everybody. But, yeah, that's like a nice insect hotel where anybody can go along. They can look at the, the different insects that there are. Um, and you can enjoy them and... And really, you know, make the most of that. And and something else that I was inspired by um, Milica is is the bee bar that you can make. Um, as I believe you made, you did a workshop on this, did you not? Did you make it do a workshop on this? I think it wasn't a workshop. It was just a few videos on, on yeah. Instagram and, and social media. Yes, you take a you take a box, something like this, from for example yogurt, fill it up with rocks until the top till the top that's very important and then you put water but be careful the rocks have to pop out of the water because the bees can drown and they just put it outside on the window seal uh, a lot of the, them get stranded they just come drink water and, and go you're like a little um fountain for the bees yep that's the whole thing <laughs> it's and but it's so easy to do and the great thing is you can have it on your windowsill and the students will pay attention to that in class and be like we saved another bee we saved another bee um, and it is brilliant. Um, now bringing the outside into class, because I know we can't take our kids out into nature all the time. It's really important that, you know, they can, they can do these other things. So I like to get my students to count the different, number one, the amount of trees they see on their way to class. And then number two, the different types of tree they can see. And this is very similar to bird and insect spotting. So you know, you're almost setting it as homework, but you're doing it as on the way to school, on the way to class. So they're, they're checking these things out. They're taking notes of them. You can look at the different birds there are. And again, it's just encouraging that, that connection to nature, not only when you're telling them to do it, but, you know, when they're outside, any new birds they've seen, any new insects they've seen, how many different trees, absolutely amazing for these um for young learners especially because they're very observant um and particularly with birds they're so obvious you know when you can see a different bird it just becomes really exciting um i can really hear my parents coming out with me there they're big bird spotters um <laughs> but it's it's such an important thing to to get them to do that and you can come in and you can compare them in class you can do like collecting you can collect the local birds, you know, and do it as a group activity. So it's not just, you know, Bebe who's counting all the birds, but everybody's doing it and you're accumulating your ideas together. So you're, you're working together because we are in this together. This is something we have to do together. Not a competition about who can see the most birds, but let's see how many we can see all together. Um, and again, like the mindful listening, sounds and smells. What can you hear? What can you smell on the way into on the way into class? Hopefully it won't be horrible smells, but horrible smells exist as well, you know. Um, but again, it's a collection of things on their way to class. Uh, leaf rubbings are great. You can get your students to bring their leaves in. You put a bit of paper on top and you just rub it with a crayon and then they have their own leaf. You can in autumn leaves are so cool they're all falling you can bring them in you can compare your leaves again this leaf is bigger than that leaf that leaf is bigger than this leaf all of these different things can come in visualizations we'll talk about in a moment show and tell again it can be anything they bring in from nature hopefully they don't just go and catch a bird and bring it into class that's not a fun thing so maybe not too many living things but rocks sticks um Again, leaves, even insects, bring them into class and show the class and talk about them, tell them about them. Now, stepping stones is one I really love. Um, 
And this is kind of linked to visualizations, but you can find some flat stones and you can put some sounds on of rivers and stuff like that and turn your classroom into the outside, you know, get the students to cross the river with these stepping stones and take nature into your classroom. These are the things that your students will remember. You will foster a love for nature and they will continue to go on loving the planet and you'll be able to int introduce more complex ideas through that as well because when you do a tree count you know you can say oh you counted 50 trees on the way into school what are some of the ways that we lose trees you know at first a six-year-old is going to think i don't know maybe they know that paper is made from it and they'll say oh well with paper but they won't think about you know um, agricultural use or mining use so there are other th ideas that you can kind of start to introduce the idea of but not like force on them. Now, in terms of visualizations, I really like to, to get my students to, you know, have a look at a picture, see that picture, take it in for a moment. Um, and then I get them to, to sit there and close their eyes. And in that moment, you can put sounds on as well, or you can simply ask them these questions to like paint this picture in their head. It's great for listening. It's great for, um for developing language but it's also great for creativity so the first one for example you could ask them all to have a, a good look at it and then close their eyes um and ask you know maybe what's at the end of the road you know what can they hear in the trees what could they see to the to the left what could they see to the right you know what time of day is it they could see the sun coming through there is it nice weather um and, you know, ask them how the ground feels beneath their feet as they're going along. So, so try and make it a multi-sensory experience. You know, what can you smell? All of these different ideas of the, this one moment and then get them to share with their partner the different things they could see, the different things they could smell. Um, and they'll really, you know, they'll, they'll have this connection. Now, the other picture, I like to get you just to imagine it and, and imagine what it would be like if it were cleaner. You know, because you can see all the trash at the front of the picture there. Hopefully students can imagine clearing that trash up and making it a much nicer place to be. So you don't only have to do positive visualizations, but it's much better with young learners to try and get them thinking about the way nature could be. Um, but also letting them know the realism of the way some places in nature are. Okay. Now... <laughs> We often talk about reduce, reuse, recycle. Now, there isn't only one you, there are loads of yous. You know, understand, unforgettable, there are so many yous. But everybody always talks about reduce, reuse, recycle. We must talk about the three R's. Um, there are so many more R's. Um, refuse, for a start, is a brilliant one. Um, but what I like to do with my students and, and work on with mine is the upcycle side of things, the, the, the element where rather than instantly going to recycle because we always talk about recycle recycle recycling is one of the world's biggest myths you know do it do your recycling do your separation absolutely do it but recycling is a bit like saying if you say you recycle and you love the planet it's a bit like saying i'm on a diet i'm gonna have a diet coke with a big mac it's it is the right thing to do but it's not really enough and it's not an excuse to do other bad things you know and it's not an excuse to not kind of try and fight it's a governmental way of saying hey guys you're recycling you're doing your bit well they can go off and continue digging for oil but that's a different topic um so let's not recycle let's upcycle let's there are so many different crafts you can do with your students i'm going to go straight to the fourth one in there which is a plant pot competition there are so many different types of bottles you can get and you can make some brilliant plant pots and guess what you can put in your plant pot? It can be a new house for your class plant. Ta -ta! There you go. And that can encourage you just to bring in other class plants to replant and transplant into this new plant pot. And they can be so beautiful. They can be fantastic. I've got one upstairs that's made out of a bucket. Although the ones I have in here are not actually recycled. They are just secondhand. So, um, sorry about that um but upcycling you can make so many things there's a brilliant bird feeder craft um 
that they can then take home. That will help with their bird watching thing. You can link all of these things together. You can make toys or games. I remember my daughter when she was three, she had to make a, a maze from um, from old recycled things. A desk tidy. Do you know how easy making a desk tidy is? It's a jar. There you go. Done. It's a jar. I've got it. I'm not sharing my camera. And I, that's silly. I just held a jar up and I was like, huh, I can't even see myself. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I forgot it. I, I didn't notice. I was thinking fine. about what you said. Oh, okay. Okay. It's all good. Nobody needs to see this face. We've all seen it. Oh, now. come on. Don't be <laughs> like that. Okay. Um, yeah, a desk tidy is really easy. You can just get a jar, wrap something around it, paint it. It's fantastically easy. Upcycled art, you know, make artwork out of your plastic. Find rubbish, trash, and stick it all together. Make it. Take time in class to do that. Um, a jar glass. Hmm, do you not mean a glass jar? No, I mean a jar glass. So you make your your glass, you can turn it into a beautiful jar or vase or something like that. Um, for example, dun, 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 dun. nice and easy. Here we go. Here's one I made earlier. You know, it's so easy to do. So talented. Well, well I say I made it. That's a complete lie. It was Alethea that made it. But, you know, <laughs> but it's so easy to do. And, um, and as you can probably see from my desk, which you can't see, but I, we don't buy glasses in our house anymore. We just drink out of jars. Because guess what? They work just as well. You don't need to buy new glasses. And you can paint on them if you want to. So yeah, this super simple idea is, is brilliant for, for students to, to unleash their creativity. Ooh, nearly there, guys. Nearly there. Um, okay, so be plastic clever because plastic is not cool. It absolutely isn't cool. My first step would always be check out Kids Against Plastic. They are incredible. Um, I'm currently developing um, an ESL version of their pack where you can make your your classes and your schools plastic clever. But this is stuff like going on a litter pick. You know, go out with your students on a litter pick. It is, I've heard it referred to as a gateway drug to environmentalism. You know, so once you start doing it, you're hooked. You know, you get on it and you can see the difference that you're making, but you can also see it come back. So there's this big, great connection where you're making a difference, but you also see the difference that still needs to be made. And it's a great way of students learning that we can't just pick it up and recycle it. We need to stop it at the source. Um, Annie Leonard said, if your bath was overflowing, the first thing you wouldn't do, the first thing you would do wouldn't be to grab the mop. You'd turn off the tap. And that's what we need to do with plastic. It absolutely is. We need to stop mopping up the plastic and calling recycling a solution and just stop making it. Because guess what? That uses oil as well. By 2050, it will use 20% of the world's oil. Um, a plastic audit. So go through your classes and check the different things of plastic that you have. Write it down and see what ways you can do to reduce it by rethinking your plastic habits. These are some great steps that your young learners can do and they can take home as well. You know, we do, we count our plastic when we go to the recycling bin and we see if we've done better than the week before. And it's a challenge within yourself to try and make, you know, it's a small difference, but if you can get all of your students together to, when they go into the supermarket and they see that the bananas are wrapped in plastic, rather than just not buying them, ask the manager, why have you wrapped these bananas in plastic? If you don't stop, we'll go to the supermarket next door. Rather than being silent about it, use their voice. Get out there and say why they're not happy with these different ideas. But show them why they're not great ideas in the first place. And becoming plastic clever is a fantastic way to do it. Again, kidsagainstplastic.co.uk, absolutely brilliant. All the steps there to become plastic clever. But it's all about reducing your, your plastic footprint which I don't know if it's a thing, but I just made it a thing if it wasn't. Um, so yeah, reduce your plastic footprint. And then green routines. Now this for me, I've saved the best for last, I guess, although we're sharing, which is even better, which is afterwards. Um, a little and often, we always say this for everything, for learning a language, you know, for exercise. You, you can't just suddenly do everything has to be green. You know, not everybody has the freedom to do everything green all the time. Um, but you can do a little bit all the time. You can do tiny little things every now and again. 
So the first one for me is to celebrate sustainable behaviors. You know, if you see Milica come into class and she's got a reusable bottle, celebrate that behavior. Say, oh, great job, well done. Like, you, you know, don't just normalize it, celebrate it. If you see Rowena comes in and, and usually Rowena's in there and she comes in and she's got a Mars bar every day and she eats that Mars bar and she laughs and she loves her Mars bar. But the next day she comes in and she's got carrot sticks. But she's got carrot sticks and a smile because she knows that carrot sticks have a much smaller carbon footprint than the plastic wrapped Mars bar. And she knows that the locally grown carrot wasn't made by evil Mars. And suddenly she's there and you're celebrating the great things that she's doing. And she's happy and you're happy and we're all happy um, because of these small sustainable behaviors. Secondhand clothes, swapping books with each other, all of these brilliant sustainable behaviors you can do. Um, five minute planet focus. At the end of the class, just a five minute focus. How has what we talked about today, how does it affect the planet? You know, so if you're, so if you're studying sport, how does sport affect the planet in lots of different ways? You know, if you're studying gaming, because maybe you love gaming um, and you're like, well, gaming's fine. I don't go outside, I don't pollute the atmosphere or anything. But then you think about the servers and how much energy the servers need. And are they running on renewable energy? We don't know. So it's having that five minute focus Obviously, you're not going to talk about gaming servers with six-year-olds, but maybe with the kind of 11, 12-year-olds. Um, a great one that I love to do is what I've done today and what I'll do tomorrow. So focus on these, again, these sustainable behaviours. So what did you do today, Bibi? I walked to school today and I didn't take the car. Brilliant. What are you going to do tomorrow? Tomorrow, I'm going to do like Rowena. I'm not going to bring a Mars bar because Mars are evil. I am going to bring my carrots. Um... The next one, um, numbers. Look at numbers. Work on uh, worldometer. Uh, info is a great one to have numbers, and you can you can put them up on the board. The amount of deforestation or the amount of CO two that's been released into the atmosphere. You can draw students' attention to this. Um, I'll, I'll put the the link in the chat box there. Uh, I what I like to do is put one number up at the start of the class, um, and then put it up at the end of the class to see the difference. I'm going to actually, I'm going to quickly share my screen with you. I'm sure that I can. This is might become a bit meta in a moment. Hang on a moment. Now I'm going to share my other screen. Uh, whoa, we can all see each other. Can you, I don't know if you can see that because it's on the same thing. We can, we can. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So there you go. So I would go on here and I would take out, for example, uh, forest loss this year. Now, as I said, I did a talk this morning at 10 o'clock. And it was on 1,700,085. Now, today we can see it's gone up 4,100-ish hectares. So this, like, putting this up on the screen and doing it between the class, uh, at the start and at the end of the class, it's a great way of students seeing these differences and getting used to these differences and also practicing these huge numbers, which we, we often forget to do. We get to 100 and we usually stop. Okay, I'm nearly there now, so don't you worry. Uh, we'll have time to chat in a moment. There's only two more left. Put the camera back on. Dun, dun, dun. Ooh, turned it off again. Didn't want to access my camera. Maybe I'm there. There we go. Uh, how does it help? How does it hurt? So thinking about the different actions that we do, how they help and how they hurt. Does one help more than others? So, for example, I drink coffee every day, and I think coffee is great. But then I remember that it actually takes more water per kilo to make coffee than it does to make beef, which is awfully bad. So just don't drink kilos and kilos of coffee. Maybe try and reduce it a bit. Um, and then our promise wall. It's just something that, you know, I get my students to write a promise and they stick it up on the wall. It can be anything big to anything small, even those tiny things like, I'll ask my mum to buy me secondhand jeans, or I'll turn the tap off when I brush my teeth or I'll walk to school three times a week, or I'll use both sides of the paper. You know, all of these things, and you've got it up there on the wall, they've made their promise, they can keep going back to it to check it, to see how it's going, to see if they're, they're sticking to their promise. And that is that. So we're going <laughs> to... Thanks for not falling asleep. Here's a picture of a bald man in a hairnet, just, uh, just in case... 
you wanted to see that. Um, that was a waste of single-use plastic, I must admit. But when somebody said to me, here's a hairnet, I was like, I have to wear it. I have to wear a hairnet because no one's ever going to ask me again. It's like if you get asked for ID when you're buying alcohol. It's, it's a dream now. I'm an old man, so it's become a dream. Mm. Thank you, Harry. So it, was, it was lovely. It wasn't, uh, we didn't fall asleep. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, so we will, we will add all the links uh, in this page. So it will be redesigned a bit later. We will add a, a little summary and the recording and everything. And Harry, we don't see you. <laughs> yeah, I've, so, it's um, weird. I'm going to change cameras. <laughs> okay, all of the links that Harry said, we are going to share them. So let, let's go ahead. I think we, we can discuss step by step. So uh, what do you think? Let's chat about the, the classroom plans. Uh, what do you think about it? I do love the idea. It's um, it's a version of a uh, class pet. Only uh, people cannot complain that uh, parents cannot complain that uh, you know someone is allergic. So uh, we're clear on that. Yeah, but also it's safer for kids and for the plant because animals are fragile. Kids are not so <laughs> safe sometimes mm -hmm. so i think it's a wonderful idea also to change the class environment because mm -hmm. schools are quite static sometimes mm -hmm. okay we had that we have the blackboard we mm -hmm. have some charts and then stop mm -hmm. so i mm -hmm. think it's lovely in, in a lot of uh, american movies we have a, uh, and tv shows we have a plot twist with the class pet everybody takes it home and then like it's a whole adventure with this hamster at home like uh, malcolm in the middle and those tv shows so i think taking it home for a weekend to take care of it is a cool uh, uh, i don't know another extra activity um, absolutely any other ideas you got there uh, about what can you do with a class pet so harry listed a lot of stuff uh, other ideas that I have include uh, following the the life cycle, which is unfortunately happens. Uh, the plant has to die at some point. I mean, it's not funny. I'm just saying uh, that's another idea to include science. Uh, Anyone my else? That just arrived. Uh, hi there. Hi there. Oh, Blinky. <laughs> I'm just gonna close the door. She's barged her way in. Uh, of course, always. <laughs> So class plans are a yes. Okay. Harry, any other tips or anyone else related to class plans? I, I think the idea when you do mm -hmm. take them home, it's a, a great idea. Um, mm -hmm. And it can also teach students not to overwater plants because that can be one of the big things that mm -hmm. um, they'll soon learn if they've overwatered it. Mm -hmm. It's not too dangerous if they only do it for two days. So um, yes, and also it can include a lot of uh, things related to composting because plants need a uh, different kind of water, not just regular water. So instead of buying additives for the watering, you can uh, what is it? Blend uh, blend uh, banana peels. They're cool, I think. So maybe yeah. learning that not all plants need the same thing, just like people and animals. They have dietary needs, which is kind of. Uh, I don't think kids think about it. Every plant needs different kind of water, sun. Mm, another science-y idea. Okay. <laughs> okay. I know you love a bit of science. Oh, I do have it. Well, it's plants. You, it just comes naturally. Okay. Oh, yes, uh, also kids love science. I got some kids asking me for having some science lesson during my courses, which mm -hmm. is quite difficult because I have a post-school courses in mm -hmm. the afternoon. So... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My hands are a bit tired, but mm -hmm. they're always asking me to do that. So it would be wonderful. Yes, just science experiments all the way. I, I, I love them. That's my thing. I do have some plants materials. I will I will share them below. And all of the links Harry said, Kins Against Plastics. Harry, you got a message uh, in the chat box. You've got on silent again, my dear. I'm so sorry. Uh, you got no, a message from, from our uh, science fiction teacher. <laughs> what about using charts or graphs to report on the observation of plant changes? Absolutely. 100%, absolutely. Like the length, the number of leaves. And that's the great thing about having two plants as well, is you can really have like a controlled experiment. And if you have two of the, the same plant, you can measure the, the different conditions in the room. And, mm -hmm. and as I say, it doesn't have to be it can just be five minutes of your class that can become a routine and then if students are taking it home they can show these things to their parents and their parents their minds will be blown mm -hmm. um, it does sound a little complicated but 
uh, to be honest, it doesn't have to be that hard. Don't print them out. It's a good idea to actually let the kids do it on the board. Maybe let the kids do their own graph and chart. Uh, you don't have to have any words on it. I've done it with the little ones. You just do like numbers and maybe illustrations. So, uh, yes, I love this idea. Simplifying, simplifying everything. Okay. Celine, do you have any, any questions about plants or any thoughts about plants? I was thinking like also taking photos of those plants that we like introduced to the classroom mm -hmm. can show a proof that like it's a living thing mm -hmm. for the students and like it can be really like beautiful to keep those like photos from day to day and like keep track of it. Mm, that's a brilliant idea. You know that those photos, if you take them every day and then combine them in the end, can make a little stop motion video so you can see the changes. Wow, that's a brilliant idea. Do you have any Harry software ideas for that? So we can combine the photos and make it like a little stop motion? That does sound like a great idea. I guess you could probably do it on almost any editing software. Mm, just combine, you know, make just... a GIF, GIF, yeah. whatever a they GIF, call yeah. it. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, yeah, just combine to make a GIF. I think maybe on, on like iMovie, it should be easy mm -hmm. enough to chuck it all okay. together and just mm. click. Play. Um, that like, that's a really good idea actually mm, and yes. again then you've got that other job of the day you know your task is to take the photo it has to be from the same place at the same angle so mm. so there's a lot of a, a lot of stem skills science technology mathematics as you said angles and stuff a lot of technology digital skills it's, it's all coming together i mean it's, it's it's lovely i love it all from just one little class plant it's just one the, little class plant yes. from a five euro plant you get all oh. of this so much content is literally um, literally too much content okay okay uh ready to go to step two what was your step two can you give us nature quick... nature yes nature so going into nature or bringing mm -hmm. nature into the classroom mm -hmm. oh, that's my favorite one <laughs> yes. so what are your thoughts harry uh what other things can we bring inside anyone else as well I was thinking about, uh, I don't know how to, it's called in English. Mm -hmm. It's like a box in mm -hmm. which there are different objects and the kids have to put their hand in it and just mm -hmm. touch without seeing what they are touching. Mm -hmm. So it could be rocks, leaves, mm -hmm. uh, something from nature it can be yeah. a sensory um, mm -hmm. stimulus for them yes. because I don't have my own classroom. So I was thinking of something that I can bring up and forth mm -hmm. to them. Yes, yes, of because course. I can't arrange my my environment for now. Mm. It's I think it's called we at least preschool teachers we call it the magic box. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, you can you can check out a cart. I do have. I cannot show you. My camera is quite up. But you can check out a cart and just kind of move your cart around the classrooms. I I make yourself more movable. But yes, yes, magic boxes. I love these ideas. I just need to write them down so we can list them in the article. Yes, artwork, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, I also do have a, a collection of pictures for that. Uh, I will share them down below. Collecting things is my, my hobby. Any other ideas anyone has about bringing the inside, the outside in? I have just maybe one more extra idea to show you. So... Uh, I don't know if you know, I have no, no clue where it is, but preschool teachers, oh, I have so, so many props here, I'm sorry. Preschool teachers love, um, love painting rocks. It's just, it's just, it's just so popular. It's like preschool teachers have a lot of trends on Instagram. So they use rocks as manipulatives for mat uh, instead of flash cards. So uh, collecting flat rocks and painting them. Yeah. Uh, and there's like kids love giving rocks as well and just if it's like, been painted even better yeah yeah rocks just rocks <laughs> okay very good nice so instead of buying plastic manipulatives and stuff um using it for using it for uh creative things okay bringing the what did you say the inside the outside out. in and the inside out so both of those we just talked about bringing the outside in so taking mm -hmm. the inside out are just what mm -hmm. we can do with our students outside yes. of the classroom yes 
any ideas, experiences, or, or maybe concerns, I think, depending on where you teach, parents might, or administration might be a little panicky. Yeah, that's that's one of the issues with, you know, taking it to, I've turned this one into also bringing the outside in because, you know, insurance and stuff like that, people are like, I can't do that, you know, it's mm. not okay. So it's like, fine, make nature come to you then. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's very complicated. I have written a short, um, a short ebook for green standard schools about uh, taking the kids outside and I, I had to list tips like you need to make uh, all the legal documents like the parents need to sign it's okay to take the kids outside and it's it's so many things that it kind of kills the desire to take the kids outside you need to yeah. you need to carry first aid kit all the time you need to know everybody's allergies sensory difficulties fears of so it's a lot of work but i do suggest starting from the maybe school yard exactly that go to the playground first off yeah um we have a great comment painting rock showing the characters and some stories they may be reading yeah yes yeah, storyboarding just instead of flashcards absolutely great yes i also use them i do i can show you that one because uh i use them for <laughs> instead of um using up real real wood i just kind of have these <laughs> cards with, a, with an actual piece of wood here so um instead of using those bot you can just use branches <laughs> okay that's another random idea very random anyone else has a comment idea experience the birds are lovely <laughs> okay we can continue to three we do have some more time to finish off. So what was step three? Step three was all about upcycling. Mm. So um, we focus so much mm. on recycling. Mm. We kind of forget what we can do with what we already have. Now, it doesn't only have to be plastic that we upcycle. Mm. You can also do stuff with clothes. Mm. Um, there are so many different things you can so do. And, and just getting students to realize that the using everything they have to its maximum potential before throwing it away mm -hmm. uh, yes. will just save so much stuff mm -hmm. uh, to be honest i have a whole box of garbage i'm not saying garbage it's materials reusable materials for example as you said from plastic to cloth to uh, uh cardboard and stuff and i keep it for crafting so when uh, I go ahead and do live workshops. I just bring this bag with me and I rarely, to be honest, I rarely buy crafting materials. So crafts can either go home or go to the garbage, but instead of buying, oh, we should use them for crafting. If I need colors, you can use uh, things from, actually kids love it. You give them a chocolate bar, uh, this little bag, they cut it like brown, okay? It's like a tree. I've seen them do it with chips and, uh, after that, I never bought uh, colored papers because they just loved to cut the plastic bags. Really weird, but they, they loved it. <laughs> exactly that, exactly that. Mm -hmm. All we need to do now is find glue that we can upcycle because that's about the only thing we need to buy now is glue because you always need glue. Mm -hmm. you to, can make the resin it. from a tree could work, but that's not, not really easy to source. No, but you can make it from flour and water. Uh, it has to be the right consistency and makes it sticky. Uh, and you think you can actually wash it away? So uh, flour and water do 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 the job. I'm not just sure if you ha we have to add anything else. Maybe a little salt. Uh, you can make your own glue, cheaply actually. So that's another project. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Any ideas for making your classroom uh, for using materials in your classroom? Have you ever tried that? Uh, I use a lot of boxes because I have a thing for boxes and paper. So, for example, we we are um, doing a little red Riding Hood project, and mm -hmm. yesterday night I made Granny's house out of uh, the medicine box for my dog. <laughs> Everything. And actually, I thought of showing them the box before doing the work, so they become more aware of the fact that we can utilize again things mm. which are, we have in our home instead of just having them the final, giving them the final result or painting the nice. Mm. 
Wow. So they can connect ideas. Okay, this is a box. Mm. You can use it to do mm. things. Mm. Just try. <laughs> no, it's it's a lovely idea. Where does the material come from? It's it didn't just magically appear. The teacher brought it first from somewhere. Absolutely amazing. Yes, I can't agree more. Any other ideas? Any any any? I think we we just discussed the positives. Have you have you ran into any problems with steps one, two, and three? I do think we just kind of ignore the problems. There are a lot of them. <laughs> uh, maybe the parents could be a little bit skeptic mm -hmm. yes. when talking about, oh, no, it's trash. You cannot use that mm -hmm. box. You have to do that or going outside mm -hmm. just to the grammar lesson or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't directly had some, this kind of problems, but I heard some conversation about mm -hmm. yes. this. Before we comment, bye, Celine. Um, chat bye, with Celine, you soon. Thanks, yes. <laughs> bye, Thank bye. you so much for the workshop. See you. Oh, you're welcome. Bye. bye, Celine. Yes, I absolutely agree with you, Ravina. This is why um, when we do environmental education, we need to educate the whole child and to help them transfer their, those skills at home. So we kind of also educate the parents, but it's so tricky to do it without uh, sounding condescending, sounding, uh, making them feel guilty. It's so very, very emotional, <laughs> a very emotional issue. You're just literally criticizing how they live their life. So I think, yeah, very tricky. Any, any tips on that, Rina or Harry or ETR21? <laughs> well, I, I, I want to include another art, art teacher. Um, yeah, I think it is, you know, getting to the, to the to parents, you, you do often have to go through the, the students, but you're, there's always going to be problem parents, no matter what you're teaching, mm. no matter what you're teaching, no matter how you're teaching it, there's always going to be a parent who thinks that you're not doing it right or you know <laughs> you need to it needs to be done differently no matter what you're teaching if you teach too much if you teach grammar in class there'll be a parent who says you shouldn't teach grammar if you stop teaching grammar they'll be like we need grammar <laughs> yeah of dealing That's with the way out these um, people the only way out to me is to, to have your own school which yeah. i do so when you when you advertise yourself you kind of put the things this is what i do and parents never complain they see we like that so um that's 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 the I think the privilege you don't get in public education, uh, unless you you want to start your own school. So that's a thought. It's difficult to make everyone happy. Absolutely impossible. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the teacher also said I use the kitchen paper rolls to make them search for insects in the garden. They love it. Yes, I mean. Really cool. Yes, and it's also a material for jokes. Toilet paper, kitchen paper, kids love toilet jokes. So, <laughs> I mean, it's really, it's, it's the reality. Yep. Uh, the last one, let's uh, finish off, uh, was... So the last one was green routines. It was just all about just... The other ones, you have to have quite a big focus on it. But mm. uh, there was the plastic clever one as well. But mm -hmm. all about taking care of your plastic and, and mm -hmm. thinking about your plastic. Mm -hmm. but the last one was all about the green routines mm -hmm. and making sure that... We take time to, you know, to take those five minutes here, there, and everywhere to to include it every day in our classes. Mm, yes, make it um, organic rather than, a f you know, like a full blown on environmental topic psh, in your exactly. head. Yes, make it an everyday exactly. thing. Mm. Any, any ideas for everyday, everyday green activities that are not too distracting, maybe? Hmm. It's a hard question. Yeah. I think it requires for the teachers to revisit how they teach first before. Um... It also requires really knowing your class because all mm -hmm. of the different ones I did there, they work differently with different classes. Like, mm -hmm. you know, the, yeah. the what have I done today? What will I do tomorrow? Works with a lot of classes. Mm -hmm. But the, um, the five minute planet focus, some students just can't find a way of connecting. Mm -hmm. I don't know, yes. going to school with the planet, you know, mm. and you have to help them with that connection. Mm. Oh. Ines from Argentina. Ines, why haven't you <laughs> written your name? We're calling you ETR21 all this time. Hi, Ines. Um, 
Hola, <laughs> great to have you. So uh, we can finish off. I know I know everybody's busy. You want to enjoy your Saturday? So I just want to say thank you, Harry. It was a great conversation. Uh, <laughs> we are going to share the recording, so uh, we do hope to um, just keep keep spreading the ideas. Ravina, you said a lot of great stuff. I would like you to send me an email. If it would be amazing if you can write it down. So we can edit with this article with Harry. I would love that. Okay, sure. Thank you. That would be amazing. So we can chat via email. Yes. <laughs> Brilliant. So I would say bye. <laughs> bye. Thank you. You are fantastic. You, you are fantastic too.